So let's continue with C. So for C, we have a rational function and this function has a numerator and a denominator. Now this type of function is continuous everywhere within the closed interval except the values of x where the denominator is equal to 0. So first of all, let's set the denominator to 0. So that is x minus 1 equals 0 and then x is equal to 1. Now what this primarily means is that the function is not continuous at x equals 1. So the function is not it's not continuous at x equals 1 and x equals 1 is found in this interval so now since the function is discontinuous at x equals 1 we conclude that since the function is discontinuous at some point within the closed interval it does not satisfy rules theorem it does not satisfy does not satisfy rules theorem so as simple as that now let's move on to d so for d we have the function f of x equals the square root of 4 minus x square over the closed interval negative 2 2 so how do we solve this first of all let's check if this function is continuous over the closed interval negative 2 2 now first of all let's try to draw this graph especially if you don't know the nature of this graph Let's try to draw this graph. So we have this to be the y axis. We have the x axis. Now we are going to pick certain values from this interval. So for the x values, we can say we have negative 2. We can pick 0 and then 2. And then for the y values, we are going to basically substitute these values into f of x. So this is negative 2, we have 0, and then we have 2. So when you plug in negative 2 here, negative 2 square is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. So we have negative 2, 0. When you plug in 0 here, 0 square is 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. 2 square is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0 square root of 0 is also 0 so basically we have negative 2 0 that is this point 0 2 so this is 0 and then 2 and then we have 2 0 so this is 2 0 so we are going to have something like a semicircle we are going to have something like a semicircle something like a semicircle so that is the function f of x equals square root of 4 minus x square now looking at this graph you realize that the function is continuous everywhere within the interval negative 2 2 that is there is no break in the function therefore we say that f is continuous over the closed interval negative 2 2 next let's investigate if f is differentiable within the open interval negative 2 2 but even before that let's check if f of a in this case we have a to be negative 2 is equal to f of b which is 2 so for f of negative 2 that is equal to we have f of negative 2 we have already done that here and that is equal to 0 and then f of 2 that is also equal to 0 therefore we say that 
f of negative 2 is already equal to or is equal to f of 2 and that is equal to 0 next let's see if the function is differentiable within the open interval negative 2 2 so we have the function f of x to be equal to we have the square root of 4 minus x square and then we can simplify this or better still express this as 4 minus x square or raised to the power 1 over 2 so basically we are going to differentiate this function that is equal to using the chain rule we are going to drop down the exponent we differentiate what we have in the bracket that is negative 2x we still repeat what we have in the bracket and then we reduce the exponent by 1 so 2 cancels out 2 we are left with negative x divided by we have exponent of negative 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 means it's going to be a square root and then negative means it's going to appear at the denominator so this is f prime of x now to find the interval in which f of x is differentiable at or within then we first of all need to make sure that the denominator or better still the value under the square root is neither zero nor negative now if it is zero it means that the function is undefined and if it is negative it means we are going to obtain a complex number don't also forget that we are working in the real domain so the value under the square root should be greater than zero or must be greater than zero therefore focusing on the denominator or better still the value under the square root so we have 4 minus x square greater than 0 the factors are negative x plus 2 x plus 2 greater than 0 we have negative x plus 2 greater than 0 and then we transpose negative x to the right hand side we have 2 greater than x and then we also have x plus 2 greater than 0 and then we have x greater than negative 2 so we can write this as we have negative 2 is less than x so less than x and then x is less than 2 and then we can represent this in the interval notation as negative 2 because we have less than it is an open bracket comma x less than 2 so 2 also less than so it is an open bracket so this is the interval in which the function f of x is differentiable over now you realize that since it is differentiable over the open interval negative 2 2 it means that all the three conditions have been satisfied one it is continuous over the closed interval differentiable over the open interval and then f of negative 2 is equal to f of 2 therefore the function satisfies rule's theorem and thus there is a value or at least one value c which is found in the open interval negative 2 2 so let's find that value c so we are going to say that we have f prime of c equals 0 now we have f prime of x to be equal to negative x over the square root of 4 minus x square so it means that f prime of c is equal to negative c over the square root of 4 minus c square now we are saying that this thing should be equal to 0 so we have negative c divided by square root of 4 minus c square equals 0 now we cross multiply and then we have negative c times 1 that is negative c and then we have this whole thing times 0 and that is equal to 0 therefore we say that c is equal to 0 so the function f satisfies rose theorem 
over the given interval negative 2 2 and that's the value of c is equal to 0. So now let's consider the mean value theorem and solve an example on that. So we have a question here that's f of x over the interval that is over the closed interval 0 2 satisfy the mean value theorem if yes find the value of c now according to the mean value theorem let's assume that f is a function so let f be a function now if f is continuous if f is continuous over the closed interval a b and it is differentiable differentiable over the open interval a b then there exists there exists at least one point or one number c which is found in the interval that is the open interval a b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a now f prime of c is called the derivative of f at c and that is the slope of the tangent line whereas f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a is the slope between the two points a b or better still the slope of the second line connecting the two ends a and b so in actual sense the mean value theorem states that for any given function that meets its condition at some point the tangent line has the same slope as the second line joining the two ends so now let's try to solve this question we are going to show or prove that this function satisfies the mean value theorem and then we are going to find the value of c which is in the open interval a b so let's do that together. So we have the function. We have the function f of x to be x cubed minus x. So first of all, now this function, so over the interval, over the closed interval, 0, 2. Now this function is a polynomial function so it means that it is continuous it is continuous over this closed interval and then it is also differentiable it is di differentiable over the open interval 0 2 next let's find the value of c which is in this open interval that is 0 2 so we have f of c to be equal to c cube minus c therefore f prime of c will be equal to 3c square minus 1 and we are saying that that should be equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a so f of b is equal to we have b to be equal to 2 so that is f of 2 equals 2 cube minus 2 2 cube is 8 minus 2 is 6 f of a is equal to 0 that is it's equal to f of 0 so f of 0 is equal to 0 cube minus 0 and that is equal to 0. Therefore, we have 
f prime of c which is 3c square minus 1 equals f of b 6 minus f of a 0 divided by b which is 2 so b is 2 and then a is 0 so 2 minus 0 and then we have 6 divided by 2 is 3 we have 3c square minus 1 equals 3 we transpose negative 1 to the right hand side that becomes 4 we divide through by 3 we have c square equals 4 over 3 so we take the square root of both sides and then you realize that we have c equals square root of 4 divided by square root of 3 that is equal to plus or minus 2 divided by square root of 3 now we have the denominator to be a set so we rationalize that so basically we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by square root of 3 and that is equal to we have plus or minus 2 root 3 over this time this is equal to 3 therefore we have two values of c so we have c1 to be 2 root 3 over 3 and then we have c2 also to be negative 2 root 3 over 3 now let's convert this to decimals so c1 is equal to 1.1547 and then c2 is equal to negative 1.1547 now coming back to the interval we have the interval 0 2 so this or these two values of c should be in the open interval they should be in the open interval 0 2 now out of these two which of them is found in this interval c1 is found in this interval however c2 is not found in this interval therefore for the values of c we have only one value that is c1 now the condition is to find or obtain at least one element of c such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a where c is a member of this interval so at least we have C1 to be a member of the open interval 0, 2. Therefore, we say that the function x cube minus x satisfies the mean value theorem over the closed interval 0, 2. And we have the value of C to be 2 root 3 over 3. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.